Kevin Jones. I'm with the law firm of South and Weinman uh, in Boston. I represent insurers currently. Um, I have known uh, Judge Kirby for about 25 years. I met her when she was representing injured workers. Uh, she had a largely Hispanic clientele. She's a fluent uh, speaker of Spanish. Um, and uh, with respect to her courtroom demeanor, um, it has always been kind and compassionate and professional. I have never seen her raise her voice. Um, I have always seen her treat lawyers and injured workers with respect. Um, and um, uh, I would leave it. Leave it at that. Uh, and I would ask that you. I hope that she understands. Thank you. Thank you. So it's your turn to tell us why we should consider voting for you for renomination, and I would like you, uh, after a brief uh, discussion about yourself and your, your job as a board uh, on the bench, I'm sorry, to address the issues that have been presented with regard to the two first dates. Go ahead. Um, good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Vina Perlahi. By way of background, I too grew up in Dorchester. Daughter of a teacher. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm a little bit emotional because I have. It's okay. I'm trying to just sending up for a time. Now, time. Okay. Now, most of us have uh, been on the board, I think, uh, the first time we came in here. So, you know, we all about you and your background. So, take your time. Thank you. Nobody's going to raise their voice to you. <laughs> we just want to hear what you want. Okay. I, I did. I grew up in Georgia's as well. I uh, went to St. Martin's Catholic School. I went to National Academy of Music. I went to college. <laughs> I lost my parents at my age. I didn't want to wait for I moved when I first um, got out of law school. Um, I started doing a little bit of insurance defense work with the uh, gentleman, John O'Connell, who's an offshoot of Parker Kohler. And later, found myself back at Williamson and Wendis with, with men I'd worked with in Jerome Cantor's office doing workers' comp. For 10 years, I was in the employees, and I fought for them. And I can understand how people feel about certain judges, because there were times I would get Notices in certain cases, and I'd be like, oh no, this is good. This is not the judge for me. And I thought, if I ever had to want to serve in this board, I would be fair. I would be fair. I would apply the facts to the law. I would let the lawyers do their job. I would listen. I have held true to that. I read, I read the cases before I go in. I make no decision. You will not see me pick up my pen unless I'm scribbling a note. I will not, I will not. I go back to my office, I review, I take in everything the lawyers say. The only time I will fill in that conference order is when I get lawyers who want to agree to an order. I don't question the lawyers. It may not be an order I would issue, but if they agree, I will take it. I take the position they know better than me. They're the ones who work with the employee, they are the ones who represent that employer who's got a problem with it. But I take my time and I'm diligent about it. I show up on time. I treat everybody who enters the courtroom in which I preside with respect. I hope I, and normally I get it back as well. We've had issues at the Board of Tardiness. Lawyers now email me. I'm fine. Just let me know who you are. I'm never going to hold it against you. Respect is not something you're handed, it's what you earn. And I have done everything. I respect people, and I think anyone who walks in my courtroom earns it. That's how I feel about it. I have never raised my voice. I have heard an allegation of a statement I made. I do not recall making that statement. I deny that statement. Because that's not something I would do. In addition, I, 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 I'm hearing things about certain hearing decisions I've written. There is a record. We get a lot of times, gee, judge, you know, I, I read I had a case at the appeals court, and um, it got it got affirmed. The review board um, summary disposed me, which means they agreed with my decision. 
wasn't this a decision I liked at all. One of the lawyers asked me a question, and I, a Supreme Judicial Court case I cited, and I said, yes, if it had been the, an employee of the employer, I could have decided differently. The problem is, is if you went into the underlying transcript, there were joint stipulations. I couldn't take the joint stipulations and disregard them. When I took that fact and I applied it to what the law was, that's the way I had to go. Justice Ginsburg's opinion, he said the law. I also had decisions on medical marijuana that I hated writing. I, I think it's a viable alternative for employees, but I can't order medical marijuana. That's been clear, that's the law, because that's ordering an insurer to violate federal law. I, I wish I could, I can't. So when people look back at a hearing decision they may not like that I wrote, I have to take what's given me as the evidence and apply the facts in the law. As far as certain allegations of what I might have done at conference, I don't have a recollection. I've heard a lot of cases. But I will tell you this, whatever came before me, I evaluated, I read, I took the, what counsel had told me, and I made the best decision possible. I do have empathy for injured employees. I really do. That's why I represented them for 10 years, and plus when I was in my own firm, I was always on the side of the, even in the employment litigation. Even when I represented employers, I always kept the benefit. And I will continue to do so if allowed to serve. With all due respect to counsel, Attorney Zolaccio and McKenna, I'm sorry you feel the way you feel, but I have to respectfully disagree. I have treated you no differently than any other lawyer. I have taken what you have given me. I think Attorney McKenna will even tell you I've actually written this <coughs> to you, but I have the evidence before me. I would ask if you have any questions that you pull those cited cases and look at the transcript, look at my hearing decision, and look at what happened. I don't have a specific recollection. I'm sorry. If I knew this was happening, I would have prepared myself. I don't know what else to say except it's been an honor and a privilege. Thank you. I wasn't going to ask you any questions, but I changed my mind. First of all, Attorney Alaccio, I know I never met McKenna before. I have no reason not to believe him, but in the same token, I believe you as well. It's going to be hard for me to say, too. I believe everything you just said, but I'm going to tell you something that the other people don't want to tell you. Oh, they have personality. I got a lot of calls. Let me start off by saying there's nothing more important than your word, and I told you I'm voting for you, and I'm 100% going to vote for you. So let me start with that. The bottom line is I got over 15 calls. I'm not a guy that does a lot of work as comp. I've never heard one complaint in a negative manner how you treat people. I've never heard that before today, so I want you to know that. You're really, really tough. You're considered, in my end, people are not going to say this here because they're going to come across as disgruntled you know, uh, lawyers on a case. You're considered very, very rigid. You're rigid. And I believe what you said. You look at this one. Why are all these other judges so much different? And I'm just curious. If I brought in 20 lawyers in a private room, I think you'd be the lawyer, the judge, who they least want to go in front of because of your decisions. I'm not saying you don't read the cases, that you read the things. You must have a little sense. This can't be the first time that you thought you were rigid, less, less uh, favorable than others. I mean, have you heard this before today? No, I, I don't understand what you mean by that. Rigid. rigid. In other words, you're not going to give the, a lot of judges would be step over the line to give an employee a break. And you're not the type, I'm going to look right now, I can't do it. You're not going to give an employee a break. <coughs> there are some, I'm just telling you, I'm just, again, 
you're, you're the judge that they least want to go in front of. And does that surprise you? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm glad you're surprised because maybe, and some of these lawyers, if you personally put them aside in three months, say, hey, by the way, I'm telling you, and I wish you, and I don't know this, but I wish you talked to privately with Judge Hernandez. I have no idea what he's going to say. But he, I, I'd be shocked if he doesn't know this. And I don't know this. I don't know this. I would be shocked and stunned if he doesn't know what I'm saying. I'd be stunned at that. You're considered a tough employee judge. People don't want to go in front of Judge Hurley because she's too tough. There's no judge there. And my, again, I talked to 15 lawyers. What are they calling me for? I don't go to the board. You are the number one judge they don't want to go in front of. You're tough. So I hope you appreciate what I'm saying. You, you don't have to, I don't expect you to agree with me, but maybe there's something, you know, after today, I mean, there shouldn't be 15 lawyers coming to me and saying, we don't want to go in front of Hurley. You heard what one of these two lawyers said, oh, Hurley, oh. I mean, there's something that's not right. I mean, and again, I, I don't like saying this myself. Like I told you, don't worry, you have my hope, but I'm hoping, I guess my point is, can you learn from this? And maybe that's not the right word. Can somebody tell you, and the only one I think who can tell you, and I don't know, maybe he totally disagrees with me. The only one I can think who can tell you is Judge Omar Hernandez, because he must talk to people. He's well-liked at the board, and I just, I, I'm hoping that he'll come to you. And he might think I'm crazy, by the way, and tell you what I'm saying, maybe not to the extent of what I'm saying. It's out there. Believe me, believe me. Uh, and I, this is a big day for you. I know it's a big day, and all you're hearing this from me. That's the last thing you wanted to hear. But I felt if I said it, that maybe someone else, they're afraid to tell you, even a friend. You know, I know I have friends. They won't tell me if I'm doing something wrong. They don't want to hurt my feelings. But I, I, I don't care. I'm sort of like, I'm a, sort of like a lot you up there in years. Uh, so I just hope when you leave here in the next week or two or three, if it all works out, have a real frank conversation with Judge Hernandez. He's the only one I can think of. Because these people are not going to, you go in front of them. What do you think they're going to tell you the truth? They're not. They're not going to tell you the truth. They all mean well. They're all respectable people. But there's got to be a reason why these people don't want to go in front of you. There's got to be a reason why there's rumblings. You ready? I've been here 34 years. I've never heard of anyone testifying against the judge. And I don't want to come across like, oh, INL is a real jerk. I'm just hoping when we see you six years from now, the people will say, Jesus, she's pretty good. We like this Hurley. Uh, I'm sorry to have said in front of all these people, and I wasn't going to say anything, but I can tell you, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. And I hope you didn't mean, mind me saying it, but I think I felt I had to say it. I don't have any questions. I appreciate it. I, I, I'm, I'm human. There is a group of mine. I appreciate it, and I will. I will, I will move forward, and I will be done. Yes, I will. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bernal. I said some things to you in the beginning of the that if you were approved, you should reflect on the fact that, you know, all these things, it's not me, it's the rest of the world. It's not the rest of the world. There's something wrong. When I'm making a call to two different unions, say, I don't support it. This is my work of friend. But I'm getting calls from a lot of lawyers that I respect and know. I have a few workers. You've never seen me up there unless I was visiting someone. But I've never, ever, I don't appear at all. But I get a lot of calls. Today. I've never gotten calls from workers from judges before, especially sitting ones. There are other people who wanted to come up here and testify that were afraid of retribution. Yeah. Not even so much from you, but from other judges. That, that's what happens. And I've said many times to lawyers when they want to file complaints against us with court judges, it is not that long ago. I said it was an attorney that was from the lawyer. I said, you don't want to do that because when you file a complaint, you're not just complaining about that person, you're going to have a problem with everybody. You really want to think long and hard before you do that. It's the same thing here. People don't want to sit in that chair and say the things that used to be like. 
upset. They're not at the beginning of their careers. That's part of the reason that they can get away with it. But uh, they in expect them from coming up here, and I hope that you do on some level, right? you know? Uh, but uh, the, um, there's something wrong when, when, when we have, uh, not too long ago, two years back, we did 11 judges. There's absolutely no opposition to those judges. Some are reappointed, some are appointed. In Georgia, nothing bad about the other two judges that have already been nominated, not a peep. Not a peep. Either way, it's, it's just going to be, they're going to be routine. I miss Judge Williams here because I was finishing a trial, but I was told by one of the other counties that it was a love fest. So there's, there's something wrong. I think if you're approved, I'm not 100% sure you're going to be, to be honest with you, but if you are, reflect on that. That maybe it's not the rest of the way, maybe it's your career. <coughs> so then I think, um, I voted for you. As I have always said, I don't have a crystal ball. And um, do you think that I can ignore? testimony that came before me today. I mean, I, I, these people are honest and, and they're risking their integrity to come and, and testify in opposition. And it's not easy. And I have to weigh all that. And, and, it, and as being second in tenure on this council with, with my friend council, I know. Because he has said, we don't see this. I don't see this happen. So there has to be a reason. And you know what? Even if they, they spoke about four or five cases in opposition. They had more because he had the work that he didn't go into detail. If it was just one that was said that was very disturbing, and that was the one where you said to a client with a pregnant wife, are you denying that? Yes, I, I, I have no recollection. I yes, I do not. Well, you know what? If only one, if they were the only people, um, I'm here with Council Duval, Council Gurley. I'm the only non-lawyer. Okay, so they see people in court and people that talk to them. I got calls. I got people that I met by chance, whatever. It never happened before. And they're telling me these things. And that story is not a story. That's a case. And there were four people that told me about it. These two people and two others. So I'm saying, I, I find no joy when I vote no. And people that know me, I don't vote no just frivolously. When I vote no, I can document it. I come in here and I have it in writing and it's in file in my office. Why? So I'm saying, if it's just one person that has been disrespected, who has not got their justice, and that's what we're for here, the justice. And I can't know what, when I when I vote for someone, what they're going to do. Something really disappointed me. And we hear about it in newspapers recently, too. So I'm saying, I can't undo that, but I only can do my work. 20 years with everybody and, 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 and do my homework. And I thought that one case was enough to seal it, seal your fate to say, imagine to say that to a man and to the pregnant woman. I thought that was the most despicable. And you know what? Someone wouldn't even say that as an attorney. A judge. A judge that you take an oath of office and you say that. in the court. These are not attorneys that I, you know, that I go uh, against in court. These are people that call me. They know I'm fair. They know I'm honest. And they want to give me information that I wouldn't know. Because I don't have the lawyer connection. I don't have the rumbling connection. Okay? Whatever that is. So that weighs deeply on me. And you're saying you never said it. I, I know that 
very fortunate and it's not something I would say. I don't know people on the screen. For me, I just tell you, vision in the same situation as me and I don't care if it's always the one thing or another global thing or another matter. I understand that. I am telling you that I can look myself in the mirror and know I would never comment like that. Well, Put yourself in my place. I have an awesome responsibility. Okay? Awesome. And when two people come in who have impeccable reputation, well respected, why would they come publicly? This is all I take. Okay? And say they're in opposition, they're in reappointment. That is that is something. So for me that I don't see, and this is my 21st year, I don't see that. So I'm saying, I can't dismiss that and say, oh, they made it up. Because I, I, I one thing, people trust me, and they will, I will not divulge names, but there's people who have talked to me that are very respected in this Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I know they're not lying to me. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know, I haven't been enough. But you don't, I, I don't know. The only thing I can give you is I, I don't recall the conversation. Okay. Yeah. But it's not something I would say. <coughs> I don't know if they interpreted something wrong. Something to discuss. I would never, in the manner that it was portrayed to you, I would never do that. And I will tell you that it has been my procedure. I never prejudge cases. I would never walk in because we don't have the subject at the board. So I never know what I'm going to hear if you know. I call I make decisions on medical reports and facts that are made by counsel before me. I never know what I'm going to have at that hearing. So you, can you don't write your hearing. decisions all the time, do you? Congress, we have a form, and there's a, a form 140. If we make our decision, it's, it's like a temporary order. What we do is we just fill in what we're going to order. We don't. I take notes, but what happens is sometimes in the five or evening, the notes get up. But if you ask me what I made in a conference decision four years ago, I, I don't remember. I've heard a lot of cases. Well, you know so, something? Those words are so disgusting. Yes. Now, let me get off that. I'm asking you publicly. Yes. To recuse yourself and say these two attorneys that came in opposition should appear before you. And also, if any counselor, governor's counsel, goes before you, you recuse yourself, no matter what their vote was, that you recuse yourself on those two. The opposition and counsel. Will you, will you say that here and promise that you will not have them vote before you? You will recuse yourself. Uh, yes, I, I, I see. I would not want any appearance of bias. I hold no bias. I think everyone, and I, I think I practice my opening with due respect to counsel. They have a right to come forward and state their opinion. I understand that. I respect that. And yes, I would want to discuss it because I wouldn't want the appearance of bias. Um, the rumbling, all of that. I don't know any rumblings on the other three nominees that have been reappointed. You're the only one. And the other thing is, what keeps going through my mind is, uh, you should have been appointed. Uh, you should have been. You should have got this letter over a year ago because your term expired, and we didn't. So what I'm saying is, um, it, because you, um, it was um, July, July 2013. Oh, what did you get? I, I, I had Governor Patrick. I the proclamation was May 29, but I did not start working with the board until after the July. So that year was. 2013. Okay. What keeps going through my mind, I have no idea when someone's coming up before me. I have no idea until I get that letter at the assembly that the governor is telling us he's appointed this person to the appeal board, to the um, health task board, to pro board, whatever. I don't know until I get that letter at the assembly. And I, I don't know why four people on the Industrial Action Board, their term has expired 
and, and, and it's delayed. And I see that all the time on all the courts. I have no answer to that, and I have no say. Only when the law comes before me. But it keeps going through my mind. How did these people all out there know that you were going to be coming up and that they had to come and, and because they heard there was going to be negativity? Now, I don't know. I don't know how that happens because I found out January 8th that you're coming up January 14th. So that's a question, and you can't answer it, I'm sure, and I can't. But all I know is that, um, you know, with these cases that you had, and you deny everything that they said. I, I, I have no recollection to confirm, but that's not something I'm saying. No, I would never make me speak like that. What I said is, I was you didn't say you're poor people. I don't know what poor people you're talking about. I don't know what's going to be No, I'm talking about the, your, um, your people that oppose you. They, I wrote them down, cases that they, they've had. And, um, you know, um, one of the, I mean, it's horrible. But, you know, the insurance settled, but they really didn't get it. They had to wait all that time, and, and they were disabled, and all of this thing. And, and, and you don't remember any of that when I, they I, testified? I don't remember the comment. I don't remember the specific cases. What I would suggest is <coughs> the hearing decision I wrote would be transferred. If it went up to the review board, there would be a review board decision. I don't have a specific recollection of the <coughs> hearing decision. So I don't have a specific recollection, and I don't want to speak out of turn, but if you get the name of the case before it has to file, you will see the hearing I conducted. You will see the appeal to the review board. You will see the review board decision. I would never, ever look at someone before hearing facts, before going through a hearing and say, at hearing you're going to lose, I don't want to be a judge. I don't want to be a judge. In the cases, uh, can you tell me, I don't find numbers, but when you look at um, workers versus people working in companies and corporations and all that, uh, which have you? Um, uh, in the cases, have you uh, have they have won whether the workers or the? the uh... Boy, I, I don't know the number, but I've never Councilor Nella talked about we looked at percentages. Well, I have a case before me where the um, insolvency fund is represented by a very large law firm in Boston, and the trust fund that the board has, and there are I believe, over a hundred province workers. The counsel for the large law firm and I don't name wants to go right to the case. It's a legal issue. Well, they have agreed to take denials. So you will see in the month of January, Ms. Simon, who works with me in December, there were 109 denials. Those were agreed orders on a very specific issue we call the reimbursement. So you're going you're gonna to say, why? Well, it's, it's not an employee. So when you look at the numbers, what I ask you to do, if you have a concern when you talk about hearing, there is a record. I do not put the evidence in. I listen to the lawyer. I go on the record when I can because the review board tells me to go on the record because they like to hear everything. I consider myself when there is a jump ball, I go employ. I go employ whenever I can. That's what I do. But you know, you're not a doctor, okay? And no, so you've got to know some responsibility. So someone is is representing uh, a disabled worker who really is in pain, disabled, he can't work, can't even do his day-to-day -day, you know, functioning of, of living. Um, how can you make a judgment that that person is not that disabled, <coughs> but you don't believe it? No, no sir. Well, what happens is, it's, once again, it's this very fact-specific. I, I, I get medical reports. If I have, I look at that. I listen to the story. I can hear a lot of things at the door. If, 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 if it's there, I, I order it. I always try to give to the employee. But if you're faced with a surveillance video or an admission that someone's working in a collective workers' comp, I put them in a tough situation there. <laughs> um, so you're talking to that specific. But I will tell you, when jump, when jump ball is always the employee, I always try to give to the employee. I've sat there with my colleagues. I said, look, Really, really need. I want to get to you. And I've done things. I've given you a hearing decision with my resume. My colleagues thought I was out of my mind. It was a case that I believed the woman. Cases against the city of Boston. I strongly urge you to take a look at that case. One of my colleagues said, You're crazy. 
doesn't deserve it. I disagree. I found a way. I disagree. I do that a lot. I don't, I can't explain to you why lawyers are calling you. Um, I, I really can't. When lawyers come into my court, they're pleasant. They know if they're running late, all you have to do is email me. I'm never going to ask of you. I will be there when I say I will be there. I will listen to you. I will do cabinet and earth. If you have any kind of problems with anything, my door is open. Please feel free to approach. Okay, I, I know it takes us off, but it's been a long day for you. Yes. But I, I just want to say that, <coughs> you know, I think of um, court trials for murder or for rape. And what does the judge advise the jury? If you have a question of the doubt, what should they do? Well, I'm saying. That's the position I'm in, and I I think that people who come here to expose themselves <coughs> to are being true. They have this is not a win situation to come and talk in opposition. It isn't at all because it, it's, it's not, people don't say, oh gee, good for him. But I just want you to know that uh, this weighs heavily on me. And um, I'm just very upset because it wasn't just one case, it was many. And as I said, for people to come up to me, I don't have that happen. Just like Councilor Ryan Ellis said, we don't have that, that people call in opposition. We really, really don't. And so you better realize the position I'm in. And I don't want to be sorry for the decision I make. And I have no guarantee, right? I understand that. And, and you have no memory of these cases, which is unbelievable no. to me. Because if someone accused me of saying, you know, you can work because you got your wife pregnant, I mean, I would I never deny that. that in this I yeah. have told you I deny that. And I, I, if I give up four people who are saying the opposite, I don't know what they heard. I remember a conversation six years ago, but I would never make a statement like that. That is what I am telling you. And that is my integrity. I never worked. Well, there were the other cases, I'm not going to go into them to, to blind this, but I mean, people are really hurt that they had no means of, of, of having money to put food on the table, and they had to wait months and months, and, and your decision is just, that's it, the insurance settled it, it wasn't that much, but they have to, because they have to go on with their lives, and they don't want to go before you again. What an awful thing to have me sit here, and there's people out there that say, I don't want to be before Judge Hurley. I've never heard that. Never. I, I, I constantly demand that. I, I can't explain that. I don't know what conversations are going between attorneys and clients. I have been in practice. I understand the fact that when I practice here, I get certain judges, and I know who I wanted as well. I understand that. Too. Um, well, I cannot explain that, but I would ask you if you have, looking at concrete examples, find the name of the cases. All, everything is open in the board. Everything's open in the board. Every word you said is down. No, 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 it is. Like, so I can't hear it. Yeah. Oh, but there was one comment <coughs> here. You read the hearing transcript. Um, and you find out why I got remanded from the review board. I, I don't want to give you specifics because if, if I misquote or make an error. Okay, I, tell me, let's go back to some of the ones that you, not okay. the things, but you've had cases of uh, appeal. Yes. Okay, and can you tell me the reason they were appealed? Um, one of them, uh, I'm trying to think. One of them was I. There was evidence that I didn't cite the exhibits. Um, and if my recollection was, and I'm not sure if that was Attorney Penn's case, is he said the deadline for the medical. Usually, I get them emailed to me or handed to me, and it was in our computer file, and I had my whole paper file, so I did not get that recorded evidence. I, I and that's why they would remand me and said I. I should review it again. And I believe that's the same case with Dr. Martin. He's been partial. And he wasn't doing <coughs> depositions anymore. The doctor doesn't do depositions. And this is like the process of getting partial before it has to go away. So that was what had happened. That was what had happened in that case. It was just simply to review medical evidence. But um, that was one. Uh, I'm trying to think of another one. Um, it was about seven. Seven that I got uh, sent back. A lot were remands. I don't think that got reversed. Um, it was one, it was an issue that dealt with uh, reimbursement. 
to uh, uh, ensure it would not get out in the workers' comp, and I followed what they had said to the public entity, the trust owner, you would disagree and said private insurance and they get their entire reimbursement. They got reimbursed on that. Um, as long as it was a scrutiny error, I corrected that they got somebody did put it on it. Um, one was the case that I carried with the judge who had retired. I actually adopted the last thing the doctor had said because he reversed himself in deposition, but the review board basically said there's one point in this doctor that used the word still, and they, they remanded to be progressed in a six month period. Um, I, I, I'm trying to think. I, I, I don't, um, most of them were, and, and when I had written them, what had happened was they then I got some redisco. But it was um, something usually with an interpretation that, that they didn't agree with because they didn't believe I interpreted it right. Or there was one that was completely medical and at first started. They said that I did not. Okay, I'm not going to hold you any longer, but I do want you to uh, publicly acknowledge that you will recuse yourself, any counselor, or any uh, of the uh, people who spoke in opposition to you should appear before you. You will recuse yourself, and you definitely can't. I, I would agree with that because I would not want to keep the system. I don't want bias. I don't understand why, because I've, I've had lawyers who have come up to me and just said, oh, they, want, they just want to take the case from us. I don't know. But I was taken back. I was taken back by this, and um, I don't understand. I'm not in the political arena. I don't have to tell you. But as I said, you know, I don't find joy in voting no, but when I do, I know in my heart. I vote with my heart and my head, and I know, I know I'm doing the right thing. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm very uh, displeased with what I've heard today. And I will not discount it. I believe it. Even though your memory is, in, you know, remembering that, um, I, 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 I will be here you. remembering it. So. I would never say that. I don't know. I didn't say that. Yeah. I don't know if, if it was a comment. I don't think it's a method of the case. What I'm telling you is, I would, I would never disrespect anybody in that way. But there were others that, 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 that really had real disabilities, and they just want to settle. They didn't want to go before you, and it was over. Yeah, so that's what I'm trying to say. Thank you very much, Councilor. All right. Thank you. Um, all right. First of all, a way of clarification. Mr. McKenna, on the case that you cited, when she said that, was there a transcript of that? No. No, it was at conference. There's no transcript at conference. Council was called up to the conference. All right. Um, so here's the situation. Is it what Bernie Sanders said? Or is it what Elizabeth Warren said? All right. It's the same kind of situation, unfortunately. A couple of things to know. We had 31 decisions completed. Seven cases were reversed by the end of those three minutes. Fellow from this morning, Judge Williams, had three decisions completed. Um, one case was either reversed or the end of the trial. Three minutes. So if you've got somebody who this morning admits, I, when I started the job, I really wasn't, you know, at the top of my game. He's got three appeals, and you've got 31. There's, I forget who said it, but in terms of who am I, I am the person I believe I am. I'm the person that I believe people think I am. And then there's the real thing. I believe that you're sincere. In fact, um, one of the people said that you are very sincere, but that you you um, over control. You get involved in areas that the judge should really not be getting involved in. Um, there's a judge, he's a friend of mine, he's a great guy, but if the DA and a defense attorney come in and say, we've got an agreement, he loves to mess it up. That's not what I'm here. If you get too involved. Um, and again, it's who am I? I believe this is who I am. I believe this is the person I think I am. 
And then there's the real me. You can't be, you know, sometimes you say something being a bit, um, or maybe the, the counselor represented the person to be along the way, and you were saying you were just like that kind of hot and you made a hot thing down. And maybe you didn't. I don't know. The problem here that you have, and I think I told you this, when you called me on the phone, I said, I don't know enough about the industrial accent anymore. I said to you, it's my, it's what people are going to say to me, and what's going to come out of this hearing that's going to determine what my vote is and why I vote that way. So there's no question in my mind that you are a sincere person. There's no question in my mind that you can pass through your homework, that you are on time, that you are, um, to the best of your ability, respectful. But as Councilor Kitty said, there's got to be something. There's something in the pot. Um, it's just not right. And it's, it's something that, um, you know, if you, we're not going to go to the industrial action board and go through thousands of transcripts that we have. I would suggest that um, can you get this information, these transcripts? Referring to, I'll, I'll, I'm telling you this, if, if, you know, I'm, I'm hearing this for the first time, and I'm clearly going to be doing a lot of self-reflection, and obviously there's going to be a lot of change, because if, if this is the perception, I don't know what to say. I have other people who express other <coughs> comments to me, um, so I'm at a loss. If someone doesn't tell me something, I, I, I can't do anything about it. I'm hearing it today. Are right. you telling me that Judge Hernandez and his friend who came in today, the people from the church, hasn't said to you you couldn't have the time? I, I started hearing that. Oh, I, I think when I, when I made my application for the appointment, I said, wow, I was kind of surprised. That was back in 2004. I went to the nominating council, I went to the advisory council. Um, people have said, you know, can I come up and say something? I would never put, ask anybody to put themselves in that situation because I think that's not fair. If the sitting judge that I can't be put in the hand and come talk to me, I can really get taken back. I wanted that people felt enough to fall me to come forward and say that. So there's clearly a divergence of opinion here. I understand what you're looking at. I can't explain it. I'm not one of the powers of even for my entire tenure at the board, for the 10 years of being in London, that was never the inner circle. I did my job. Um, I'm clearly going to be taking that to a lot of self-reflection. I have heard the comments. I, um, I hold no grudges. I respect people who come up and say what they feel. I think you have the right to. Um, and I, I clearly refuse myself in any case that they may be assigned or they say my conflict list. I'm, I think that's the way to go. I'm clearly going to take back all the comments if I'm allowed to continue serving, and I will make good use of them. I will. I enjoy my job. I do my best. For every bad thing you've heard, it was a case that it's over today. An employee came up to me today. Another judge had a case. She went two years without benefits. I really can't get you to reinstate it. And she said, thank you for giving me back my life, Judge. I appreciate it. That was one of the greatest satisfactions I've had. I get that a lot. Why I can't explain to you, these 15 people, if, if, if I knew I should have had witnesses, I asked them to tend to come because when they spoke to me in the phone room down in Costa the Bay, you indicated I should have cared for them. I asked Attorney Henry. He said, I'll be there. I did not plan on bringing witnesses. I did not know. I was on vacation with my family when I got a call from the case. I came back. My mail was being held. I didn't get the letter until the 14th. I called the attorney Devaney. We don't use our home phone. I use my cell. That's all I've been contacted with. I didn't, I have my cell here. I have no, I have no That's okay, but I get it. Um, I mean, when we left the events, it's that Monday. It's not the go to bench. I don't have that. Um, I, I can tell you that if that were the case, I would have been there. I, I don't.
don't know why I was scheduled so quickly. I had no control. Because we have done things together, we also are. Oh, but the point is, I would have, I would have not you all this. It's just that it's not this. Um, I'm, let, me, let me just say this too. The, the issue um, this morning was um, persons rated as a successful performer. And that, their, their review ratings are exceptional, highly effective, successful performer, or below expectations, which is a kind way of saying it. Judge Omar Hernandez said that the fellow this morning was um, continuing to improve and improve and improve and improve. What do you say about this nominee? I can say that her stats speak for themselves. They're excellent stats. No, I'm not talking about the judge. No, no, no. I'm just. I'm you, you are a constant, constant professional. What's the news, sir? But the bottom line is, have you heard complaints about this nominee? I have. Okay. Did you ever go to her and say, you know, there's complaints about her? We have spoken. There is, there is room. I believe that she. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, 